Tuesday, November 17th. We will march in full uniform on the streets of Skokie on Independence Day. In 1977, the American Nazi Party plunged a quiet Chicago suburb into chaos. Everybody knows it's a damn Jew town. And forced a Holocaust survivor to face a historic enemy with an uncontrollable rage that threatened even the family he loved. If they bring the swastika here, there is nothing will keep me from fighting. Danny Kaye heads an award-winning cast in Skokie next Tuesday, November 17th. Wednesday on the season premiere of Nurse. Finchley almost killed a patient. Why are you protecting him? Mary risks her career when she fights a cover-up. Oh, God. Then it's Kevin Dobson in the exciting premiere of Shannon. At home, he's more than just a single parent. At work, he's more than just a cop. Shannon, right after Nurse, Wednesday. At Cape Canaveral, the bird is aimed skyward. Will the shuttle make it this time? Dan Rather with the preliminaries for the CBS Evening News tomorrow. This is CBS. Next on Live at 11, a raid in Society Hill tonight and a suspected IRA gunrunner and convicted killer has been arrested. Concern and anxiety about crimes against senior citizens prompts an important seminar from Philadelphia Police tonight and Deborah has that story. And Tom Kane says he's the next governor of New Jersey and we'll have inside information tonight on Jim Florio's strategy. Also tonight, a real surprise in the Great Philadelphia Tax Revolt. Some of the leaders of the rebellion have paid their taxes. And the 76ers invade Michigan. Jim Kelly with the highlights, next on Live at 11. Forget everything you've heard about prunes and listen to this. I'm proud to be a prune from California. I was born a plum, but now take a look at me. Oh, yeah. I'm moist and sweet and plump, just right for snacking. I'm a California prune, and I'm plum good naturally. Today's prunes, plump, moist, and snacking good. Oh, yeah. What's cooking? Bamberger's Cellar Sale. All this week, all through Bamberger's Cellar, you'll find terrific sales, reductions, special buys, on just about everything you need to cook, serve, entertain. Like 50% off Carvel Hall Cutlery Set, Carving Knife, Chef's Knife, Pairer, Utility Knife, Filet Knife, Sharpening Steel, Hardwood Slant Block, all seven pieces, just $45. For savings on Carvel Hall Cutlery and appliances, cookware, copper, dinnerware, flatware, stemware, it's the cellar at Bamberger's. What's happening on the family feud at 7.30 every night? Well, there's a lot of friendly feuding, fussing, and fighting. A little hugging and kissing. And it's never the same twice. You'll see the winners and the losers. Huddled and befuddled. All having their ups and downs. Why not play along with your family? Join in the fun weeknights at 7.30 here on Channel 10. WCAU-TV, Channel 10, Philadelphia. Larry Kane, Deborah Knapp, Jim Kelly, and Herb Clark. The Channel 10 News, live at 11. Good evening. A suspected IRA gun runner twice convicted of murder and wanted by police nationwide is under arrest in Philadelphia tonight. Detectives say 37-year-old Thomas Mason and his female companion, 27-year-old Barbara Joella, were picked up in a raid today. Detectives raided their home at 224 Titan Street in North Philadelphia, rather South Philadelphia, and confiscated $25,000 in furniture, a 30 caliber rifle, a 22 caliber rifle, a shotgun, and a flak jacket. Detectives say Mason was on parole for a murder conviction in Oregon and is wanted for an $800,000 silver theft in a New Hope home some time back. And detectives believe him to be a major supplier of guns to the Irish Republican Army. The quiet and the calm of an affluent neighborhood in Wilmington, Delaware, was shattered early tonight by the apparent murder-suicide of a middle-aged couple. Police say 48-year-old Carolyn Wise of the Wawasset Park section of Wilmington was killed by five shots to the chest as she entered her home. Inside, police discovered her husband, 57-year-old Wilbert, dead of three gunshot wounds of the chest. Police found several notes in the house indicating that Wise killed his wife, then turned the gun on himself. 
In Philadelphia tonight, an elderly man was pushed out a flight of stairs to his death. It happened on the 2100 block of Huber Street, and the victim has been identified as Peter Baker. A suspect is being questioned in the murder of this 69-year-old Philadelphian. Larry, it is violence like that that has senior citizens in Philadelphia and across the country afraid to leave their homes. A federal study released today showed that three out of four older Americans are living in fear. And it is that fear that brought 60 senior citizens together tonight in North Philadelphia to hear about crime prevention. Some of the people there had been victims of crimes. But two or three years ago, up down Ridge Avenue, the guy come right by, boop, gone. Hit you? Yeah. He hit you? Yeah, yeah, he took, he took some money off of me. So I got knocked down then and he snatched my bag. They were victims. Most here tonight have never been, but all share the fear, and it has made them prisoners of their own homes. I don't go nowhere. You stay at home all the time? Practically. We're trying to take the fear of crime away from you, because this is what making most senior citizens shut in. This is what making more senior citizens is staying inside their homes and not being able to perform their everyday duties. Officer Carmelo Colon told these senior citizens how to cut down their chances of becoming victims, not to carry a lot of cash, to carry purses close to their sides, to travel in groups. The federal study released today said that three out of four older Americans curtail their activities or hide in their homes because they're afraid of becoming victims. Officer Colon is traveling around to senior groups to change that, and tonight it worked. So far I've never been bothered. But you're still, even though you've never been bothered, you're afraid? Oh, sure. Who wouldn't be out here now? You feel better after the meeting tonight? Yes, I do. Why? Because I learned some uh, more uh, ideas and who to contact if anything should happen. And I feel as though now that we are pretty safe. Officer Cologne's main message to the senior citizens tonight was to be careful and aware, not be afraid. All right. Deborah, we have more on the Philadelphia Crime Watch late tonight. An unidentified man described in his late 20s was found shot and killed late tonight in the 1300 block of West Seltzer Street and in the 1300 block of West Erie. 20-year-old Virginia Edwards was found shot to death. Her male companion, 21-year-old Kenneth Ward, is under treatment for gunshot wounds right now. So far, there is no motive and no suspect. And there is more in West Philadelphia tonight. A man is charged with stabbing his own son during an argument over his schoolwork. Detectives say it happened inside a laundromat at 55th and Vine Streets around dinner time. 38-year-old Leslie Thomas of 213 North 54th Street is charged with stabbing his 15-year-old son in the chest. The boy, whose name is not being released, is in guarded condition at Misericordia Hospital. 47-year-old Shields Fry of North Philadelphia faces murder charges tonight in the mysterious death of a 60-year-old Philadelphia real estate woman. The nude body of Dorothy Shank was found stuffed in the trunk of her car last August in North Philadelphia. Officials still haven't determined the cause of death, but today police arrested Shields Fry and charged him in the case. He's being held without bail tonight. There is a major snag tonight for a bill that would change the way school districts in Pennsylvania get their money. The Pennsylvania Senate passed a measure last month which would allow schools to collect up to 3.5% in local income taxes instead of property taxes. But today, a House committee voted to hold public hearings on that bill, and some lawmakers say that could be the beginning of the end. It was tax deadline night in Philadelphia for wage tax violators tonight, and there was what you might call a TKO at the final bell. Jane Mitchell reports. This collection office should have been packed tonight because 9 p.m. marked the deadline for 12,000 tax delinquents to either agree to pay their back Philadelphia wage taxes or face prosecution. With the deadline less than three hours away, the collections office was virtually empty except for counselors. Still, city officials insist the scarcity of delinquent taxpayers here tonight does not mean the amnesty program has been a failure. It's just that the action was over here at the office of a New Jersey lawyer who's handling the hardcore tax resistors from the Garden State. These people live in Jersey and only work in Philadelphia. Many take the ferry to their jobs at the Philadelphia Naval Yard. They say they don't even use the city streets and shouldn't have to pay Philadelphia's wage tax. But tonight, many gave in reluctantly. Turns my gut. Turns my gut to pay this city. This is probably the first time tonight, it's probably the first time I've been in this city in about five years. And before that's probably been five years. I don't have a damn thing to do with this city, and I don't want a thing to do with this city. The city claims it's broken the resistance by conducting widely publicized seizures, confiscating the car of a man who owed $3,000, seizing two houses, and freezing bank accounts. 
I figured uh, I have to pay it or we're going to lose everything we got. The amnesty program lets tax dodgers pay up over 24 months. Of the 12,000 dodgers, only about 2,000 had agreed to pay as of tonight's deadline. That's only a sixth. Still, the city insists they are the ones who owe the most, who combined will pay $7 million, the ones whose property the city would go after if they ignored tonight's deadline. Jane Mitchell, Channel 10 News. President Reagan is vowing tonight to stick by his economic program, even while predicting hard times in the months ahead. Mr. Reagan told a White House news conference the government must stiffen its spine and not throw in the towel on cutting the budget. He then went on to warn Congress he will not stand still for any budget-busting bill. I stand ready to veto any bill that abuses the limited resources of the taxpayers. It's ironic that those who would have us assume blame for this economic mess are the ones who created it. They just can't accept that their discredited policies of tax and tax, spend and spend, are at the root of our current problems. Mr. Reagan added there is uncertainty among his advisors on when we will pull out of the current recession, but said it will come in the next several months or by the middle of 1982. When Deborah and I return tonight, illness forces Henry Fonda to cancel out the engagement he's been waiting for. And in New Jersey, Tom Kane declares victory. And the Pennsylvania Senate declares all-out war on look-alike drugs that can be dangerous to your health. The story's next. Today, many winemakers are attempting to convince us by comparative taste results that their wines are superior to others. Giuseppe Spatola styled his wine not to be compared, but rather to be definitely different, to stand alone. So pleased was he with his wine that as a tribute to his wife, he named it Orvilla. Orvilla, a crisp, dry, white wine blended from some of northern Italy's most enticing grapes. So treat yourself. Enjoy Orvilla White. Orvilla, a legend in her own wine. Years ago, making real Italian food meant waiting for the Progresso truck. Tony! Send up some tomatoes. It carried the Progresso foods that have become a tradition in Italian kitchens. Today, you can enjoy Progresso Italian style breadcrumbs, specially seasoned to turn chicken, meatballs, veal, or fish into an Italian feast. So, for Italian style breadcrumbs, make it Progresso or make it yourself. Tony, since I found Progresso, I don't have to cook anymore. Shh. I won't tell anybody, Mrs. Carbelli. <laughs> Hey, uh, this cream puff you sold me knocks some pings. Pinging? I don't hear any pinging. Do you hear any pinging? That's not pinging. That's tiring. If your car knocks some pings, try Gulf Super Unleaded, one of the highest octane unleaded gasolines to help stop knocking and pinging. This is a sensitive machine you bought. Maybe it's the gas you're using. Get Gulf Super Unleaded, the gas with guts. Your Lincoln Mercury dealers announce upfront money, so you can save now, not later. Now you can get $400 to $500 cash when you buy a front-wheel drive Lynx. $600 on Capri, $700 on the sporty LN7. Apply a two-year down payment or get a check direct from Lincoln Mercury. Get upfront money on some of our most popular models. It's a better way to beat the high cost of financing. Get up to $700 cash. The cash is coming to the cash Last week at this time, the votes were being counted in the New Jersey gubernatorial race, and tonight, the votes are still being counted, but Republican Tom Kane has finally claimed victory, while Democrat Jim Florio is looking for office space for his transition team. Here's the latest tally from the News Election Service. Shows Kane leading Florio by 1,677 votes. Meanwhile, there were all the earmarks of a victory speech today at the State House in Trenton. It was there Tom Kane proclaimed himself the new governor of New Jersey. Every single vote in the state has been counted, and it, since it has been counted, uh, not by a great margin, but I am the winner and I am the governor of the state of New Jersey. Kane predicted his margin of victory will hold up if Florio asks for a recount as expected. And on the subject of that New Jersey governor's race, we've got some inside information tonight. A source close to the Jim Florio campaign has given us word on his future plans. We've learned that if he loses the expected recount, the congressman is now considering the possibility of seeking a court order, overturning the entire election and ordering a brand new one between himself and Republican Tom Kane. That would be interesting. In Harrisburg, we got a real preview today of the 1982 governor's election in Pennsylvania. Democrats in the Pennsylvania Senate helped to defeat Governor Thornburg's nomination of Montgomery County Republican Lowell Reed Jr. to Commonwealth Court. 
This is the fourth time this year that the Senate has rejected a Thornburg nominee. And as we approach the governor's re-election campaign ne next year, you can expect more political fireworks between Thornburg and Republicans in the Pennsylvania Senate. Deborah. Well, the state of Pennsylvania is cracking down tonight on the manufacture and sale of so-called look-alike pills. The Senate has approved legislation that would stop the distribution of the pills, which look like amphetamines, but actually contain non-controlled substances like caffeine. Meanwhile, nine Pennsylvania companies are among 26 look-alike drug firms that have been ordered by the U.S. Postal Service to stop advertising and shipping the pills through the mail. Doctors who supported post office testimony say the pills could cause heart attacks or stroke. Governor Thornburg wants to give nearly half a million elderly Pennsylvanians a Christmas present, $100. The governor told a senior citizens group in South Philadelphia today that the state lottery is making so much money, he wants to expand several programs for the elderly. The plan includes a one-time $100 cash grant to 414,000 seniors in the Older Pennsylvania's Inflation's Needs program. The governor says he hopes the legislature will approve the plan by Christmas. Actor Henry Fonda, a favorite among all Americans, has fulfilled a lifelong dream to star in a movie with his daughter Jane Fonda. But the 76-year-old actor isn't well enough to attend the movie's premiere. Fonda's wife says Henry is bedridden and won't be able to show up for the opening night of the movie on Golden Pond next week in Los Angeles. Fonda has been suffering from heart problems and has been wearing a pacemaker for the last several years. And up next, Brooke Shields loses her battle against those new photos. And the 76ers take their show on the road. Jim Kelly with the highlights. All the sports next on Live at 11. Uh, didn't I see you here last week? I've been here three weeks. <laughs> don't you have a home? I don't have a men's store. A clothes. I have nothing to wear. Go to another store. You, you just can't find better clothes. Go to Boyd's. They carry the best. Walter Morton, Lewis Roth, Burberry's. And Boyd's has free valet parking. But, but my size. Relax, Boyd's has a hundred suits in your size. Are you a man without a men's store? Come to the finest. Come to Boyd's. But I used to be a 44 extra long. Hi. I just bought something. I got this great umbrella. Perfect timing. The Aramis City Touring Umbrella is your bonus with any $10 purchase of Aramis, Devon, or Aramis 900. Aramis, the impact never fades. Now at Bamberger's. But you have to be rich to get certificates. Mom, you shop smart, save smart. PSFS certificates pay so much more. And I got mine for just $500. That's all? Now you can enjoy tax-free interest with new PSFS All Savers Certificates. We can help you make it. Call PSFS for tax-free interest up to $2,000 on a joint tax return. My son, he's one bright boy. We can help you make it. Railvac presents George Burns. That's my name, too. George, what's the secret of long life? Railvac Alkaline Batteries. Rayovac Alkaline Batteries. I'll play a minute waltz a thousand times off. You're the flower of my heart. Sweet alkaline, pretty. You too. Too tall. But the secret of long life can't be a battery. Are you kidding? This one is for dancing. Rayovac Alkalines really are the secret of long life. Rayovac Alkaline. Power for the long run. Activity today on several fronts concerning Pennsylvania schools. Twelve state lawmakers introduced bills that would ban teacher strikes, except where a court decides a school board has not bargained in good faith. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia School Board and the teachers will go back to the bargaining table Thursday. Talks today produced no progress. And it seems as though the 50-day teacher's strike may have cost the district up to 19,000 students. Enrollment was down 10 percent during the first full week of classes this year. Dr. J was the man of the day for the Philadelphia 76ers at the Silver Dome in Pontiac, Michigan. 28 points, huh? That's where they're going to play the Super Bowl, you know that? Yeah, that's we'll right. be there, too. You think so? Yes. Do you have your tickets? Uh, I'd like to get them. Get some for Deborah. She needs okay. some tickets. All right, the season, only six games old now. 
call it the preseason. I mean, there are still 10 games to go until Boston. That's the real season, the class of the NBA, of course, a couple of meetings with the Sixers and the uh, Celtics, the rest of the NBA. But, hey, one of the also-rans the last two years, Detroit seems to have turned things around after only winning 16 and 21 games over each of the last two years. That man, Isaiah Thomas, ex-Hoosier, another Bobby Knight grad, Kent Benson, have helped turn things around in Motortown. Okay, the uh, Sixers had their hands full for a while. Then they finally got thing going. They played Globetrotters here for a while, and finally Lionel Hollins gets the outside shot. Nifty passing underneath by Doc right there. And there's Hollins from the outside. Dr. J, the big roll in the second half. The doctor had 20 of his game-high 28 points in the second stanza, leading all scores. Bobby Jones gets into the act with that dunk there. Isaiah Thomas with a jumper from the foul line. He's only a rookie, remember. Sixers led at the half 45-41, and they win it 95-93. Now... Not Piscataway the other way, up at Madison Square Garden, the Nets and the Knicks. First half action, all Nets. As it was 26-26 at the end of the first quarter, 55-54 Knicks at the half. That was uh, Buck Williams, and here's Otis Birdsong. And then in the second half, the Knicks turn it on. Mike Newland, ex-Nets, he had 18 points. Randy Smith, and then finally Maurice Lucas with a pair. And the Knickerbockers hung on against the New Jersey Nets, 111-111 to 99 the final score there elsewhere around the nba you look at the first two we've given you the sixers by a bucket and the knicks over the nets pacers on top over the cavaliers atlanta burying milwaukee boston wins easily kevin McHale, 21 points boston and the sixers identical five and one records the bulls on top over kansas city and phoenix five better than denver at the intermission hey who's the american league comeback player of the year that's right greg lozinski larry if you said a former philly for six years you were right the bull Traded to the White Sox in Chicago. Today was so named after regaining his own form by hitting 21 home runs, 65 RBIs, and slugging 265. Being wanted again, said Greg, from his Medford, New Jersey home tonight, was a key contributing factor to his success in Chicago. A lot of the game, Greg said, is mental and feeling wanted and knowing he could contribute and help the club. It was a great season, said Greg, after the experience in Philadelphia. The White Sox said, you've got a job, now go out and do it. American League Comeback Player of the Year, Greg the Bull Lezinski. And another former Philly fared pretty well today, too. Good guy batting coach Billy DeMars for 12 years. A Philly's coach let go under the sale, restructuring, and Pat okay. Corrales' regime. Signed on by the Expos in Montreal. Billy's one of the best batting instructors around. He'll also coach third base up in Montreal, ironically replacing Ozzie Virgil Sr. Ozzie Virgil Jr., of course, is a catcher for the Phillies. Billy will be a plus with the excellent young hitters in the Montreal farm system and probably would have helped Andre Dawson in the playoffs against the Phillies with his slump had he been with the other side. Now Billy DeMars is, and we wish him well. Bad. Tonight in Atlantic City at the Sands, the WBA six-ranked bantamweight from South Philadelphia, Johnny Bang Bang Carter, fighting Sergio Castro from Los Angeles, who is, by the way, the only fighter to have beaten Carter as a pro. You take a look at action early in the fight. All right, that's Castro on the right side of the screen right now. Carter, that's Johnny Bang Bang Carter on the left side. And even as we speak, we are waiting for the results of the fight from Atlantic City tonight. Remember, this is a world bantamweight elimination bout, and apparently that bout is still going on down at the sands, so if we get that result, we will give it to you. We tried by phone. We couldn't Who get Who did it you think was ahead? I don't know. It's hard to... Carter won the fight. See? Carter won the fight. I just got it in my earphone. That's right. Bang, bang, Carter wins. Right? Instant results for you, That's right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Model actress Brooke Shields has lost her fight. The teenager tried to stop further use of nude pictures taken of her when she was 10 years old, but a judge in New York ruled that further use of the photographs would not cause her irreparable harm. The Shields and her mother claim they signed releases allowing the photographs only to be used in a 1975 issue of Playboy magazine. Up next, the great Pacific balloon adventure continues. Herb Clark tries hard to warm you up. And in South Jersey, it's happy birthday to the U.S. Marines. The local celebration, next on Live at 11. The secret to gasoline is not to buy the most octane, but the right octane. Oh, Jerry Burke talks about gasoline. The three grades, I can satisfy just about any car. But octane isn't the only way you judge gasoline. Dependable gasoline has to start quick and keep your carburetor clean. Those are qualities Exxon puts in all three of their gasolines. So whatever grade you buy, it's good. Exxon has thousands of independent dealers who offer a choice of quality products and services. Jerry Burke is one of them. 
You are about to leave the world of ordinary sports cars and make the Eagle switch. The revolutionary two-wheel, four-wheel drive Eagle SX4. The only sport machine that lets you switch from two-wheel drive to full-time four-wheel drive. From high mileage on the road to high adventure off the road. Two-wheeling in style or four-wheeling in the wild. The Eagle SX4. A switch from every sports car in the world. From American Motors. In a business as demanding as the investment world, some people need to get away from it. But for the stockbroker with an unyielding drive to win, nothing is more important than information that could mean opportunity. Hey, how about this weekend? While others can't keep their minds on business, he can't keep his mind off it. I made the announcement today. I think we should sell. The winning attitude of Bates. Put it to work for you. United gives you a lot more to California than just a great price. I like United. I like their own time record. You can call up and uh, get your seat assignment ahead of time, which I think is terrific for people that travel a lot. I made a call and then got advanced seating without having to go to the airport, which is a benefit. The wide body was spacious and comfortable. That was good. I'm six foot five, so I have a lot more room on a wide body. The only problem of the food is I tend to eat too much. The price was excellent. The price was terrific. Fly the friendly skies. It's a good airline. That intensive search for weapons inside Greaterford Prison in Montgomery County has turned up quite a haul tonight. State troopers say the search has netted four guns, several unfinished guns, and instructions for the manufacture of other weapons. The prison-wide shakedown began after the hostage siege of the prison ended last week, and police say they expect some arrest within a week in connection with the discovery of those weapons at Greaterford. Four American adventurers are on their way home the hard way tonight, attempting to make the first balloon crossing of the Pacific Ocean. Satellites are confirming the 160-foot Double Eagle 5 is on course, pretty much on the trajectory from Japan. If all goes well, the Double Eagle 5 should be near the U.S. West Coast early Thursday morning in time to dovetail with the launch of our space shuttle. Oh, my goodness. Uh, not me. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> <laughs> space shuttle weather down there yeah. is questionable again. They're looking for oh. some showers on Thursday morning. they got heavy rains tonight in Florida, a couple of inches in some places down there. You want to know our weather? Yes, I do. It's going to warm up tomorrow, and we got some sunshine back. That will be nice. Today, I don't know, it, it feels milder now, feels a little better outdoors now than it did all day today. I have a suspicion that just the looks of this gray and gloomy day made the weather feel a lot colder, a little more biting. But we also had moist and cool weather throughout the day. It's as warm now as it has been all day today. It's not a bad day, I guess, if you're bundled up well to take a walk through the woods. 43 degrees now. That's the 24-hour high. The low this morning was at 38. But look at that humidity, way up to 82%, even at this hour. The barometer dropping down on the breeze, continuing from the northeast at five miles an hour. Now, early tomorrow, we've got a cold front that'll come pushing through here. And once it comes through, we get a shift in the winds. We pick up some strong breezes tomorrow, but also it'll help to wipe out some of the clouds. We've been holding on to that easterly breeze, and it keeps the clouds coming in. The winds will shift, though, early tomorrow. Northwesterly, they'll run to about 20 miles an hour. Beach Haven, expect a high tomorrow about 55 degrees. That's a little better, 38 or 39 in the morning. Up by Mount Pocono, about 50 or high tomorrow, but you'll go below freezing tonight around 30 degrees. And down at Bear, Delaware, 42 to around 56, the temperature range. We have a high-pressure area that's off the east coast continuing to hold some cloud cover in here, but the bulk of the clouds in the east are down here in the southeast. There's a storm center just tucked up there in the northeastern corner of the Gulf of Mexico, and it's spreading rain up in the South Carolina and back across the Gulf States area and Florida and heavy rains. We'll pick up some of that warm breeze tomorrow. This is the front that comes through here, though, sets us up for a return to colder air tomorrow night. We're talking about 50s tomorrow but we drop back into the 40s for the day after tomorrow. Satellite photo. Here you can see the heavy clouds down here. And although the nighttime photo from outer space doesn't show them too clearly, we also have clouds back about halfway across Pennsylvania at this time. So our call for tonight is for mostly cloudy skies. It will be cold, 32 to about 35 degrees by early morning in Philadelphia, although we may see some breaks in the overcast early morning. We do expect partly sunny skies tomorrow, warming up to about 55 degrees, but the cold stuff comes, it'll be breezy, though add that, and on that breeze, the temperatures drop down tomorrow night. And on Thursday, about 48 degrees. But look, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, comes back very nicely. If we can bring it in that way, not a bad five-day forecast. By Sunday, it's the Indian summer weather up to about 65 degrees. So some sun tomorrow, some clouds, but we'll have a strong breeze, 55 degrees. I think it's going to be a nice day for November 
11. Tomorrow. Lots nicer than today. Yeah, it will be better than today, yes. Okay, Herb, looking ahead to tomorrow news-wise, the big event will be the celebration of Veterans Day. Ceremonies remembering our war her heroes will be held throughout the area. Also, several places will be closed tomorrow. All federal, state, and municipal offices and courts will shut down in the greater Philadelphia area, as will be Pennsylvania liquor stores and banks. Also, no mail will be delivered. And coinciding with Veterans Day tomorrow is the 206th birthday of the Marine Corps. Tonight in Almanesson, New Jersey, and across the country, parties were held to mark the occasion. It was on this date, in 1775, that the Continental Congress formed the Marine Corps. And the people celebrating tonight are proud of their long heritage. And it was formed in Philadelphia. That's oh. live at 11 for tonight. And thanks for watching, and have a nice Wednesday. Good night. Who says you can't afford genuine leather shoes? Well, right now at Father and Son at Indicott Johnson, you can buy two pair of leather shoes for only $39.90. That's right, $39.90. And these leather shoes feature cushion insoles and lifetime soles and heels that will outwear the uppers or we'll replace them free. At these prices, you'll want several pair of these genuine leather shoes with lifetime soles and heels. On sale at Father and Son and Indicott Johnson today. Now Bambergers takes off 20 to 50% on American tourister luggage. Every size, every style, every color. 20 to 50% all right now at Bambergers. When you want a great hotel that puts you in the center of things, let Sheraton put you there. Call 800-325-3535. Only First Pennsylvania all cyber certificates come with free gold and silver jewelry, tax-free interest, and free jewelry. Only at First Pennsylvania. Beautiful. Give us a week, and we'll give you something better in beautiful music. Compare Easy 101 with Philadelphia's other beautiful music radio station. Easy 101 is different, more interesting, more alive. Music that's relaxing without being dull. Listen to Easy 101 for just one week, and that you'll hear the difference. Try it. Nothing else is a Volkswagen, and nothing else is a Volkswagen dealer. Pick out any 1981 VW before November 15th, and we'll make your November, December, and January payments. This offer is on all VW cars and trucks financed for 48 months. We'll make your first three payments so you pay nothing until February 82. See how much you can save on the VW you want at your Volkswagen dealer now. See Family Feud weeknights at 7.30 on Channel 10. Tonight, a double feature on the CBS Late Movie. I'm not going to let you get away. I want you to marry me. Alice, call that fish and reel him in. What are you waiting for? He's handsome and loving, but is he Mr. Right? A dilemma for Alice. That girl himself, 14, has been murdered. How many men in that precinct house? You make it sound like we're going into battle. We are. A cloud just called in on his car radio. Elton Packer is dead. Is this a siege? McLeod. And now, Alice. Early to rise. Early to bed. And in between, I cooked and cleaned and went out of my head. 